Treason! Out! Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does the Star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Hello, I'm Father Greg Jacobowitz, University Chaplain at St. Bonaventure University, and thank you for joining us today. Today we join our hearts in prayer for all those lives lost and forever altered by the events of September 11, 2001. As we remember the 2,977 men, women, and children who lost their lives in New York City, Washington, D.C., and Shanksville, Pennsylvania on that tragic day, and as we especially remember members of our own Bonna family, Father Michael Judge, OFM, Rob Peraza, Amy O'Doherty. Let us pray a prayer that was first offered in the Archdiocese of New York. Lord of mercy, Prince of peace, this date, 9-11, carries a heavy burden of memory. This day does not pass without our remembering, we remember images of death and destruction, images that human eyes were never meant to see. We remember words our ears were never meant to hear, the tender last words of husbands and wives who would never embrace again. We imagine the feelings of emptiness in the arms of children who at the end of the day could not find their mom or dad for their welcome home hug. We remember our own feelings of emptiness as our sense of security, as our own confidence in the predictable order of life and work was radically shaken. We remember the heroism of the many that lost their lives in saving others. We remember all those who suffered and died. We grieve for them all, friends and strangers alike, along with their families and friends. And it is right that it should not pass from our memory. But today, in this prayer, along with our remembrance of profound loss, it also seems right that we give voice to our deep, longing for peace. And with this prayer, commit ourselves to those actions that will draw us closer to our most ancient and most holy desire, peace among all God's children. And so we ask you, most gracious God, give us the wisdom and courage to work tirelessly for a world where true peace and love reign among the nations and in the hearts of all. May the Lord grant us peace. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with heartfelt compassion 
kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against another, forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I invite you to join in with our prayers today. Our response is, God of peace, hear our prayer. For all victims of violence and terrorism around the world and for their families, that there might be comfort, justice, and peace, we pray to the Lord. God of peace, hear our prayer. For the church, that she may continue to provide care and healing, especially for the families and friends of St. Bonaventure alum, Father Michael Judge, Amy O'Doherty, and Rob Peraza, and for all those effect affected by the attacks on September 11th, we pray to the Lord. God of peace, hear our prayer. For all first responders who continue to protect and keep us healthy and safe, for their continued safety and in thanksgiving for their hero heroic efforts, we pray to the Lord. God of peace, hear our prayer. For all those who are suffering in the current pandemic, that they might know the healing, comfort, and consolation of our loving God, we pray to the Lord. God of peace, hear our prayer. And for all students, faculty, and staff here at St. Bonaventure, that God's grace would continue to guide and protect all during this academic year, we pray to the Lord. God of peace, hear our prayer. I invite you now to join with me in praying the peace prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. On September 11, 2001, America was changed forever. It has been 19 years since planes struck the World Trade Center in New York City, the Pentagon, and a small town in central Pennsylvania. But that tragic day has served as a true test of the American spirit in many ways. Today, as we observe 9-11, we're living in a world with new tragedy. The pandemic, which comes with enormous uncertainty and pain, and of course, the loss and anguish caused by our history of systematic racism. With all that these things represent, we honor the value of life, our country's resilience, and the strength of the American spirit. It was the wife of the pilot of Flight 93, Sandy Dahl, that said, if we learn nothing else from this tragedy, we learn that life is short and there is no time for hate. As we move forward today, let us honor those who lost their lives by respect, respecting and appreciating one another. Let us show special appreciation and gratitude for those who each and every day defend and protect us. Let us also remember all first responders at this time and those who put their lives at risk each and every day. 
The victims of 9-11 were robbed of the joys of this life. Many never saw their children grow up or graduate from college or experience all the joy that comes with the full cycle of life. Their gift of life in this world was stolen. We can only hope that they have found a new life, a better life, a life promised in the scriptures, a life that we believe in with God. But while we are here, let us all be grateful for each and every morning for the gift and the value of this life. As we continue to navigate the current turbulence in our world, let us continue to love one another and have hope and faith in the future. Present, Oaks. Oh, my God. 